right, just saw the Amazon delivery guy drop off this package. You guys will see in a second what this package is. So let's get it inside. All right, let's go open up this package. How's it going everybody? Welcome back. We have something exciting. Well, I got an Amazon package, so I guess that's exciting. But we got this today. It is actually something that I've been needing to get fixed about two, actually almost like a month ago, I blew the sub inside the G-Wagon in the back seat, so I needed to order another one. It came today in the mail, as you guys can see here. So I'm gonna hopefully be able to wire it and put it back in. All right, so this is the one that I ordered off of Amazon. It was a fairly cheap replacement for the one that's in the car. The one that's in the car is a six and a half inch Harman Kardon Mercedes-Benz subwoofer. I don't really, I couldn't find a replacement one for it, like an OEM one, and even if I did, it'd probably be like $400 for it. So I kind of just found something I think that would work. And now that I'm looking at it, it says six inch on the box. It said six and a half. That sub in the back is six and a half. So. I'm wondering if this is gonna fit. I guess we're gonna have to find out, open it up and see, but uh, this will be interesting. So in order for me to get to this speaker, I need to put my back seats down and this door is not, I didn't even shut this door. Uh, this back seat's gonna go down in this, but I can't, there's not enough room in this garage. So I'm gonna pull this car out and we will see if we can get the seats down. All right, out of the garage. I'll put the back seats down in this car. Gotta open up the trunk. Oh, this will be exciting. All right. So first thing you gotta do is there are actually there are latches here that you pull over here, and the seats go down. That one goes down. It's a 60/40 split. So pull that. If I'm strong enough. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, seats go down that way, and then you're looking at like, oh, that's as far as G-Wagon seats go, but there are actually two other latches down here that you pull, um, but now that I'm looking at it, I need to go put the front seats forward, otherwise the headrests won't go down. All right, let's hop into the back. And as I was saying earlier, there are two latches down here. Uh, you pull these down here, and it lifts up all the way forward like that. And then you pull this one and you lift it forward. And there's the speaker right there. So we're gonna take this and a little uh, Phillips screwdriver and let's see if we can, if this will fit. I don't know, I have no idea if it'll fit and I have no idea if the wiring will work because Germans and their electrical wiring, they like to do things funky, so. Okay, so here's the original one. Uh, they're both a dual voice coil. Um, so this one is a, has the two cables on it here, and here's the one I just got. It has the du dual voice things right here. Uh, the problem I just found in, or ran into is, if I put this into the hole, right here it fits except for now I can't screw it in like I can't screw the the protection plate over top of it because these unadvertised thingies are right here so I don't I don't know how I'm gonna screw this in I'm wondering if I can I don't know. All right, good news. I got a, uh, I had like a, like an eight piece uh, park tool bike Allen key set that was the size that I needed for those little doohickey things. So I unscrewed them and hopefully these should line up uh, 
somewhat flush with that over there. So I'm gonna see if it'll fit, but I also need to figure out the wiring. So I might have to call uh, a buddy of mine to see if I can, cause I've never wired speakers before. It just looks like red and black, but I don't know, I've never done this before, so. All right, so there's a lot more to today's video than watching me attempt and fail at installing a sub in my car. Today I wanted just to kind of talk about the five things that I enjoy about this car, that I haven't noticed that I like about owning this car since I've had it. Um, there will be a follow-up video about the five things I hate about owning this car, but today I thought it'd be a little bit more positive uh, in spite of this frustrating endeavor here and the blistering heat that is today. So let's get started with number five. And so number five reason why I like this car uh, that I have noticed since owning it is I really like the sturdiness of the car. So even if you research about this car, they use the galvanized steel frame, they do this all this dipping process to prevent rust, but just like I mentioned in my previous video about this car, the, the slamming of the doors, like everything just feels really, really solid and sturdy. And that's something that I really appreciate in this car just because it's something that you feel like is not gonna break. It's not gonna, it's not gonna collapse on you if you go somewhere. Everything just feels really heavy, well built, and something that you can build or have some trust in when you go somewhere. All right, number four reason why I like this car is not a paid product placement by Chick-fil-A, but I just was hungry, thought I'd stop in and get something to eat. So number four is the wow factor of this car, if you can count that as anything realistic. Uh, wow factor just kind of means that it has a presence to it. Like if you take this car anywhere, uh, it seems to get a lot of attention. There's a lot of, there's not a whole lot of cars, like I mentioned before in Idaho that look like this. So I think that helps it a lot. But in general, people just are intrigued with this car. I think they've always been intrigued with this car. I don't know if it's the celebrity or the expensiveness of the car, but it just seems to be something that people gravitate towards. If even if there's a lot of other cool cars around, people still are somewhat intrigued by just the status and the stance of a G-Wagon, just the way it looks. And so it's kind of fun having that. It's kind of different having that. I have a, another car that I still have yet to reveal, but that one has always got attention too. But this is just a different level of attention where people will stop and take pictures with it. They'll stop to ask you for pictures with it. The people come up and run up and try to be discreet about it. Um, I'm hoping to try to film some more of those things with people just kind of get like hidden reactions with people But it's kind of funny watching people so it makes me enjoy this car a little bit more than other people When I know that other people enjoy it too or think that it's something interesting or cool The most spotted place you will ever see G-Wagons is right there. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it's Whole Foods Market, so. Number three, I would say I really like this car. It's really hot out here, so let's, uh, it's important to hydrate. Uh, reason number three, I would say I really like this car is performance. All right, so I'm gonna make performance number three on the things that I really like about this car. I think number three, it's number three for performance just because I think these cars get a lot of underrating in their performance and a lot of people don't realize actually how quick they are so they make now I think currently they make 
three different models, but in the past they've made four models. They made the G500, they made the G550, and they made the G55 AMG, and they made the G63 AMG. Uh, and the higher performing one models, oh, and also the G65 AMG. But the higher performing models like the G63 and the G55 AMG were both running a 5.5 liter V8 twin turbo uh, that was putting out upwards of 500 horsepower, if not mid 500 horsepower. And we're running 0 to 60s in about 5.5 seconds, which in my opinion is pretty quick considering the car weighs almost 6,000 pounds, uh, which is really, really heavy. Oh, actually, it's over 600,000 pounds. So. It's just something that's that I think is under overlooked in these vehicles and underappreciated. So I personally enjoy the performance of these vehicles. That you can have such a big vehicle, but a fun time driving it. It's not Ferrari fast. It's not Lamborghini fast, or even a S63 or E63 AMG fast. But it is quick enough for you to enjoy uh, the G wagon in all its glory. All right, before we get to item number two and one, I just thought we would show the quick skyline of Boise. The city always is really pretty to see, especially in the early evenings. When the starting sun starts to go down, you can kind of see this cool city skyline. So take a look right here. You got jump over here, uh, and all this is kind of like newish, uh, new apartments over here, uh, newer hotels over here. But we got a pretty skyline tonight, pretty sunset. Uh, but yeah, let's go get uh, number two. Oh, and this car sounds pretty good in a parking garage. Let's see if we can pick up that sound of my exhaust. It's not a 63, but it can sound like a 63 if it wants to. Item number two, why I like this car would be its capabilities and its nimbleness. Uh, I tried to find a spot where I could pull this up onto like a rock or a curb or something, but all of these things are pretty steep. So I, uh, pretty steep right here. So I can't really find anything to like really park it up on. So. I just am gonna pull it over here and talk about number two. As I mentioned before in my previous videos with this car, um, the car does have three locking differentials, which makes this car one of the most capable off-road vehicles that are for sale from the factory, which I think is pretty cool. I haven't had to use the locking differentials yet. Um, I did, like I said, and take it to Sun Valley for the car show, went off-roading in it. Wasn't too rough of a road to need it. Maybe during the winter I'll need it, but, uh, haven't needed to use it yet, but just knowing that that car has those type of features makes it really, really interesting to me. Oh look, Squirrel wants to be in the vlog. Do you have anything to say? No? Okay. Something else that's really cool about these cars uh, for capability wise is the wheel articulation. Something that a lot of people don't really know about this car, but if you Google or YouTube uh, G-Wagon off-road, capabilities or G-Wagon off-roading. Uh, the factory has like a test course where they'll take them and they'll do some off-roading, but they'll do like these weird dips um, uh, for like a trial run and the articulation of these wheels is great. And this squirrel is staring at my Chick-fil-A sandwich and at me. I don't know if he wants a bite of it, but you want a bite of it? No? Okay. Anyways, the wheel articulation of it is probably one of the most I've ever seen on a stock car, uh, which is due to its independent suspensions rear and front. I mentioned in my earlier clip that this has a solid or independent front and rear axle, but they're actually solid rear and front axles. Um, so yeah, the new ones are the ones that have the new independent front and rear suspension, which makes it a completely different ride. So it's my bad, I miss, I'm uh, confused both of them. This car is actually narrower than a Ford Focus. If you actually were to measure it from the front to the front, uh, side to side on the front, it's narrower than a Ford Focus, which makes it really, really nimble in 
in uh, off-roading capability or in off-road situations, but also for city driving. So it's kind of actually nice to have in the city. It maneuvers really well. It can get through tighter spaces compared to the average car, uh, which makes it nice. So if you need to get through a tight situation, you don't have to worry about door dinging it. Uh, or if you need to get through a tight spot like I did in Sun Valley to go find a camping spot, um, there was a lot of trees and shrubs on both sides of it. Uh, and compared to like, a, let's say a bigger truck or something, the side mirrors, the tow mirrors, or even like the body paint over here would have got scratched. But because it's narrower than an average car, I didn't get it scratched. I think I barely scraped the mirrors, which is something that's pretty cool. All right, and last point about this car that I forgot to mention with capabilities and nimbleness, if we can classify nimbleness as even as a word, but this car, if you look at the history, was designed as a military vehicle back in the 70s, and so everything is supposed to be really easy to fix. So the engineers of this car, when they designed it for the Shah of Iran, they wanted it to be easy to fix on the go. With being able to fix, or being able to keep it easy to fix on the go, uh, they designed everything to be kind of replaceable. So the front windshield, because it is so vertical, as you guys can see here, it's a lot more vertical than the standard windshield of a car. There's no curve to it here or here. Um, you, can, you can see that it's really flat. Uh, that was meant to, if the, the windshield ever broke while driving it uh, through, Serengeti or wherever it was, you can find a standard piece of glass and just quickly replace it. Um, they also designed it so that the engine could be easily accessible for oil changes and other things that broke often on this car or broke more frequently compared to other things. And pretty much anything else was designed for ease of use and uh, capability of being fixed quickly and without taking a lot of time or resources. That's a really old Volkswagen bus. All right, so number one, I am gonna say my favorite thing about this car is its style and its heritage. Okay, number one, like I mentioned earlier, is style. So style and heritage for this car. I mean, just look at it. Right now, against the skyline, against this beautiful mountainous line here and the city, the city of Boise in the background, it just looks very, very classy. And that's something that I really, really appreciate about this car. So that's why it's gonna be number one, is the style and the history of this car. I have always liked this car. Like I mentioned in my previous videos, uh, I've liked this car since I was a kid, and I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon. Um, I will always appreciate this design. I've always thought it was a very classic, very classy look. Um, and as for the history of this car, people like me, celebrities, people who have owned them that have a passion for cars or people who even don't have a passion for cars know that this car has a very, very rich history of uh, Mercedes putting a lot of research and development into it. So that's something that I also really like about it. I think that's gonna wrap up the whole video today. There wasn't really a whole agenda or point for today's video. I just kinda of wanted to talk about the reasons why I like this car personally, what I have found out, what I like about it from owning it for the last two months or so that I've had it. Uh, I just thought I would share that with you guys. So, like I said earlier, there was gonna, there's gonna be another video that's gonna talk about the five things that I don't like about this car. Um, even though it's kinda of hard to find that, there's still things I don't like about it, but yeah, so those are today's five things that I don't like about today's, this, or that I do like about this, this vehicle. I'm sure there'll be other things along the road that I'll find out that I like about it more, but as of right now, that's what it is. So, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you wanna see some more things. Uh, leave a like on it to let me know that you liked it, but I will see you guys next time. And one last thing I forgot. I did not, I was not able to get the speaker installed today. I don't know, like I said, a lot about that. So I'm gonna wait for another day to do that. Uh, but just wanna let you guys know I did not get a chance to do that.